what I'd like to do is show you guys how to uh, solve a one-step equation when now we're dealing with two fractions. So I know we're dealing with fractions, and fractions make us, you know, kind of cringe. We're like, oh, well, we got to deal with fractions again. But what we need to do is we just need to stop and think about what is happening to our variable, and then just use the inverse operation, and we should be okay. All right. And then I'm going to show you guys a second way to solve this. First way, let's look at our variable, which is k. Then we need to determine what is happening to k. There's no addition, there's no subtraction, and k is not, right now, being part of this fraction. So therefore, what's happening is k is being multiplied by 4 fifths the fraction. So remember, so we know what now what k, what's happening to k. It's being multiplied by a fraction. The next thing we need to do is we need to determine what is the inverse operation. Well, the inverse operation is division. That is the opposite of multiplication. The third thing we need to do is now use the inverse operation on both sides. So I'm going to divide 4 fifths on both sides. <coughs> what happens is any number divided by itself is going to give you 1, right? So we kind of just like to say sometimes those cancel each other out. 1 times k is going to give you k. Now we have 8 ninths divided by 4 fifths. If you guys remember when we were dealing with fractions, we don't really divide our fractions. What we learned was instead of dividing fractions, we can flip the second fraction and multiply, and that will give us the exact same answer. So we can say 8 ninths multiplied by not 4 fifths, but by 5 fourths. 8 times 5 is 40. 9 times 4 is 36. Equals K. Now, the next thing we can do is we can always look to reduce our fraction. And you say, what is the largest number that goes into both 40 and 36? You say 4. 4 goes into 40 10 times. 4 goes into 36 9 times. So I'm going to rewrite my problem as k equals 10 ninths. <coughs> now, let me go and show you one more way. If this doesn't really make sense to you, let me try one more way that might help. Another way you can rewrite the problem is we can actually make k a part of the fraction. So if you say 4 times k divided by 9, that's the same thing as 4. Why am I getting 9? You can say 8 ninths equals 4k divided by 5. That's the same thing as 4 fifths times k. So what's kind of nice about this is you determine, it's easy to determine the inverse operations, and then it's easy just to do the opposite. Well, how, what is the 5 doing? The 5 is be, or the k is being divided by 5. So to undo that, you multiply. And then remember, 5 times 80 is 40, and 1 times 9 is 9 equals 4k. Uh, now what we need to do is, or uh, now we see what's happened to our variable. Our variable is being multiplied by 4. So to undo that, we have to divide by 4. Yes. Right? And instead of dividing by 4, we can't do another like division by 4, so we have to multiply by the reciprocal. So it'd be 40 ninths times, what's the reciprocal of 4 over 1? 1 fourth. And still, my answer is going to equal 10 ninths. So those two different ways you guys can look at when you're dealing with fractions. All right. Just always remember to find your variable, determine the operation, and then determine the inverse operation, and apply the inverse operation on both sides.